So I'm trying out the 12 millimeter here in my studio today and man oh man can you see so much more. So today I am going to be showing you something really really incredible. Now I haven't seen this in a very long time. It is the first camera that I ever shot video with way back around 94 or 95. I might have been around 15 years old or so. I was actually given this camera from my dad just a few days back. I haven't opened up this camera bag in the last 20 years. This is going to be super nostalgic. Um, bear with me as I kind of open this up for the first time in a very, very, very long time. Let's get to it. So to give you an idea, this is what the camera bag looks like. It's huge, okay? And this is not the one that you carry over your shoulder. This is one of those handheld cameras, the, the personal camcorder type of cameras. So let's get this open. Oh, all right. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, not very, very interesting. Very interesting, guys. So my first immediate thoughts on this is that for the size, it's light. It's lighter than, I would say, my Sony a7 III with, let's say, the 12 by 24 and maybe a few little extra gizmos on top of it. But wow. Okay. So real quick now, I'm going to tell you, well, I should have had this on first. Let me tell you what we have here. Surprisingly enough, it's a Sony. It's a Sony Handycam. I'm going to bring this right up to the lens right over here so you guys can see what it is. Okay. It takes a Video 8 cassette. Um, oh, wow. 20 years ago guys, 20 years ago was the last time I saw this camera and I was using this camera around 1994, 1995 when I was 15 years old. I haven't seen this camera since at least 2000, maybe even later, maybe since 98 or 97. Back in the day, it was like a manufacturer uh, production type of date at the bottom of the camera where it would tell us what year this camera was actually made in if i'm lucky enough i can find that so manufactured march 1991. it's amazing how they give you all this information like in today's cameras i would still have to look around the body of the sony a7 III to see if they do put a manufacturer date but it's amazing what information is included at the bottom of the camera in fine print it's, it's just down there it says 91 and then there's a, like a bunch of other details about this camera at the bottom here but yeah the model number is ccd f301 dc 6 volt sony corporation made in japan so since you figured out that this camera was built in 91 i can go ahead now and show you what this camera is about so from my knowledge of using it for quite a few years back when i was a kid i'm basing it on that this is the, the viewfinder right over here all right and the way you would hold this camera is by slipping your hand in like this and th this might be a nice thumbnail picture but yeah uh, you would just hold the camera like this now i was a lot smaller and a lot smaller <laughs> so the way i remember holding this camera was holding it like this because i wanted it to be extremely sturdy so i would be holding the camera just like this with two hands and kind of looking around like that watching everything through here and that is the only way you could view and watch what you're recording for hours so by the end of it like i can't even recall if i had this eye shut or not because i was like trying to concentrate in here the best practice was to keep this eye open too to kind of get an idea of what was going on everywhere else around the room and also keeping one eye right at this viewfinder at the back here goes the battery the battery pack. I'm going to look for that in the camera bag and show you what that looks like. There's an on and off button right over here for the remote commander. I guess the remote commander is like a remote control. And in today's age, you would just call it a remote or a, we used to call it a converter as well. 
So you had a wireless remote converter to play, pause, rewind the video that you're watching on this. So interesting. Then to the side where I would keep my hand right over here, we have a couple of buttons here. So let me just show you what that looks like here. Here is the red record button conveniently located. You'd use your thumb to record. Then since we're on this side of the camera, we have a couple of buttons over here. There is a record start stop button over here too. Did I just drop the mic? Good God. Okay. Camera's falling a little bit apart here with the, with age, this is kind of crumbled. You also have a wind, a built-in wind mic on and off switch right over here. Moving to the front, we got the lens cap. Once you take off the lens cap, this is your camera lens right over here. It's a 68 millimeter. It's F 8.5. Now moving to the other side. So to my left side of the camera, and then we'll go to the top. So that's the zoom. This is the focus. There's a fader right over here, a fader button. And then there's a macro AF autofocus button right over here. We then have a edit search button. This was for when you were viewing the video back, you would be able to hit the edit search button right over here. Then we have a little secret door, shall we call it? Let me just unlock that. We got a shutter speed button. We got a white balance button. We got a backlight button. We got a focus button and we got a push auto button. That's how that looks right over there. You guys can take a look at that. And then right at the back, at the side over here, we got an eject and we got a battery release button right over here. It does need a battery to eject the door. Okay, now moving to the top of the camera right over here. There's a hot shoe right at the top here, which is quite interesting. It'll be funny to see if I actually put in like today's technology right at the top here. Like if I had put in my uh, field world monitor up here or my road mic right on top of here, that would look quite interesting. You have the, the zoom in and out buttons, okay? And then all your controls. So when you are viewing your video back either on the camcorder, which mind you, if you were watching everything back, you would be watching it through the small little viewfinder over here. But if you were to connect this to the TV, which we would do most of the time, then you would be able to use this as a VCR, a mini VCR. Uh, if you guys are younger and don't know what a VCR is, it's like the device that came before the DVD player with the VHS cassettes. But uh, right at the top here, we got all the buttons that you would need to navigate through your cassette. So right over here, we got a few buttons. We got date, time, age, event, counter reset, and zero memory. This is where you would kind of program the camera to the dates and stuff that you want to have displayed on, on your footage. We got two sockets here, just near my index finger. And those are a remote and it looks like for earphones because there's like a an ear right next to it. So the symbols that they used back in the day are very different than what they use today. Okay, so now we'll do a what's in the camera bag little segment now since we've kind of gone over this whole camera and see all the accessories. Okay, so I got the camera bag in my lap. It's pretty big, so I'm not gonna attempt to hold it up and show you what's inside. Holy smokes. Okay, so here's the remote. See that? So this remote is literally the size of my hand. You can see how technology has changed over the years and Look at the giant size of the buttons. I mean, realistically, you would think that they would just reduce the size of the remote because you do not need such a huge play button and it's such a huge stop button, but that's how it used to be back in 91-ish. Uh, Let's see what else is inside the bag. Ah, we got a Video 8 cassette. Okay, so this was a wedding. Yeah, I actually shot weddings. I was that 15-year-old with that and I loved it. All right, so you got these cables that you connect from the camera to your VCR or to your TV. Put your cable TV through this. Okay, so we have the original instruction manual as well. Yeah, there's, there's some stuff about being creative with your camcorder here. Here's the battery. Wow. If you want to kind of compare that with today's camera batteries, 
it's uh it's more than half the size of today's camera batteries and could probably only hold half of what the Sony E7 III can hold today power wise it's a NP66H battery pack 6 volts wow okay so <laughs> i'm going to try to charge this one now if i do get this battery pack charged i am going to include some footage of what it looks like looking through the viewfinder of this camera and if i can't get it charged then you will not see that little segment in this vlog today okay found something else oh man this is pretty disgusting so i mean with age this is a attachment for your viewfinder i would assume I'm just sticking my hands in sockets and pockets and stuff like that. And this bag has been probably sitting in the basement for a while. Imagine if there were some bugs that actually came out. Oh, my dad's a smart man. My dad's a smart man. He actually bought a second battery pack. So I would assume that one battery pack wasn't good enough. Now this box gives all the details about the battery. The stuff that I was looking for to share with you guys. Extended use up to one hour and 45 minutes. So this battery gave you an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, again, it's a six volt battery. It's even bigger. It's a bit heavier. This is interesting. So this is not a Sony battery. It is a battery that would actually work with multiple cameras. It clearly says at the back here, and I'm going to read it out to you, that it is good for Sony, Ricoh, Nikon, Fuji, Pantex and Sanyo. Interesting. Now, in this day and age, you do not find batteries that will fit in the Sony and that will fit on in the Nikon at the same time. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, wow. So this is a charger. This is bigger than my camera. This is bigger than my Sony A7 III. And this is where you would mount the battery so the battery i'm going to do it right now i assume it would just snap into place there's like a power switch over here so you can charge okay so this is uh -huh. this is a charger plus it's a converter and what i mean by that is that if you mounted this onto the back of the camera this would give power to the camera so you do not need to use your battery pack. This is especially good for when you were like viewing back the video that you recorded or once you've actually connected your camera to the VCR, then you just hook this at the back so you're not draining the battery pack on your camera because it only holds an hour and a half of, of battery charge. So you'd plug this one and, and then this would plug into the wall and this would power up your camera so you can do a view back. At the back here as well, you have like a video audio out so this was like a multi-purpose type of brick. And I think that is everything that was in here. I hope you enjoyed this little unbagging of a camera that is dated from 1991 that I used around 1994, 95, which was eons ago. Um, it, was, it was definitely some nostalgic memories. It was, uh, that's how I started. That is how I started. That is the equipment that I started off with. Funny enough, I'm back on the Sony, from the Sony. Like, a lot of interesting things to just kind of take in. If you guys liked what you saw, do give me a thumbs up. And as always, I'll remind you to smash that subscribe button. It's gonna be at the bottom corner. You guys can do that, it'll mean a lot. If you have any comments, questions, comment below as well. I'll leave you guys at that. You guys take care of yourselves and we'll catch you on the next one.